All right, so I've uh, rolled down to my friendly bookstore and got myself the latest book for for World War III, Team Yankee, the West Germans. It doesn't have the wonderful, you know, rolling off the tongue that Leopards does, but it's to the point, West Germans. So here, it's a... Uh, it is a hardback book, but it seems rather soft for a hardback book. I can, you know, bend it. You can see I can actually bend the uh, the uh, hardback book, just letting you know. But looking at it, it's actually a very healthy-sized book for a uh, Battlefront book. It has the usual uh, progress of the timeline. What I'm more interested in when it comes to Team Yankee, though, I'm interested in the contents. So we're going to turn over to this lofty page. They have a bunch of, you know, not history there. And then we have this, the uh, force chart for the West Germans. It has a typical, including allied formations, and you may include uh, compulsory combat units as support units. So if it comes in a black box in the actual formation. But notice how much thicker this is compared to last time. This, 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 this and this came from two different supplements. This, 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 and these are all new. Notice over here, the M109 has finally showed up as a support element you can purchase separately. And we have one box worth of uh, Kanon and Jagdpanzer. Keep a note of that for the future. We're going to talk about that in a second. We also have the arrival of the MLRS rocket launcher system. Much like the M109, the Americans made their artillery and then sold them to whoever. So, also make a note, you can't just buy however many you want to these forces. You're limited to two of this wonderful formation here, and you're limited to one of each of the Panzer off Klarung's companies here. So, everything else you can take three of. Some of you are limited to one or two, so just keep that in mind. And, strangely enough, right here, it has special rules. The bazooka skirts rule comes to mind right off the bat. I'm looking at that and thinking, in the other book, do we have an update where that one covers front and side armor as well? Because there's a very specific weapon in this book that has Chobam armor. But its front armor is far less than the 16 that Chobam armor covers. The reason front and side came out for bazooka skirts was because of the Leopard 1 using the bazooka skirts and having a less lesser front armor than the bazooka skirts can handle. So keep that in mind. Now, here's the beast of the hour, Leopard 2A5. It is the most expensive tank in the game at 17 points. It has armor stats of ungodly proportions, mixed with pretty decent high speeds. I mean, it's road dash and country uh, dash are about the same speed. Crosses on a 2+. plus has the bet one of some of the best firepower in the game as far as anti-tank ratings. It's just a good tank, and you pay for every inch of it. So we've got that. Um, we've seen the addition of the American-style M109 to the Panzer Artillery Battery, so check to make sure you get the A3G version instead of the G version when you're doing that. Come to think about it, going back to the beginning, what version do we get over here? We get a... 109G is the version you get over here. Panzer companies. We've seen these before. These are the same ones that they had in, you know, in Leopard and in the uh, Panzer Truppen book. It's just slightly uh, updated with different options that are now included as well. The Martyr II makes a presence. Now, I'm not a really big student of armored fighting vehicles of the IFV variety or the APC variety, but the Martyr II comes as a surprise to me. It's got just about everything that the Martyr does, except for anti-helicopter. You have the option of taking an automatic, shoots like a machine gun, 50 millimeter gun, a 13 anti-tank. Oh boy, that's nice. The Martyr II itself is very nice. You want to get in someone's flank with that? Yes siree. Fires the same on the move as it does standing still? Yes siree. I'll take one of those. I'll take several of those. That would be great. The, uh, the Martyr II is an amazing tank. And that, yeah, it has the armor that a Panzer IV does. But it has Chobam armor. So it technically has armor 16 versus heat. There's the Martyr II. The Gepard has been slightly changed, so now you can take up to six of them. That's great. 
That's broken. That means I can take all the Gepards again. I love taking as many Gepards as possible because it's a vehicle that has an anti-tank rating of 11. The amount of dice you roll to hit is 4. So it's actually, it's actually technically better than the, than the uh, non-upgraded version of the Martyr 2 we were just looking at. Unless you want armor, in which case it does not have that. Neither does it have Chobom or anything like that. The Fliegerfoss works the same. It has, still has the up to six teams you can get. Then, you've seen the Martyrs before. They've changed how the, uh, the, they've changed how the Milan mount works, so you can choose to do it when you dismount. When you dismount, you take the Milans with you. When you're in the vehicles, the Milans are on the vehicles. So that's how that works. And of course, here is the Panzer Grenadier Company from Panzertruppen using uh, M113s. So it uses American trash. The Leopard 2 Panzer of Klong's Company. This is, the, if you want to play this game on the cheap, this is the cheap way to do it. Take a Command Leopard 2A5. Take a uh, box of three Leopard 2A5s. That's four out of one box. You'd be left with one spare sprue. Then buy two boxes of Martyr 2s and just fill them up. You'll be able to bring, that's an army. That literally, I've done the points for it. That's an army. All of those, one of those, it's an army. And you get these Martyr 2s that have these machine gun-like fully automatic weapons that are really high power. You have normal machine guns just in case you really want to use them. Or you might as well just crank open the real damage and hit things with a firepower 4+. plus. I heard you like dug in infantry. If so, we like firepower 4+, plus and our machine gun-like weapons too. So we're going to stick with the, uh, the Martyr 2 because it's just, a, just an amazing weapon. Panzer of Glorious Company, the same one that we had in the uh, original book. So... There's that guy, the Fuchs Company. I like the Fuchs Company. It's said the infantry unit does not have the scout rating, and that the Fuchs Transport itself doesn't have a scout rating. You'd think at least the infantry guys would have a scout rating. And then, of course, there's the real reason I went and purchased this book. The real reason I play with West Germans and Team Yankee in the first place. <laughs> The Fallschirmjäger. The Fallschirmjäger have been a long time in coming. And if you're familiar with the World War II part of this game, there's a lot that Fallschirmjäger can do. They're just an amazing troop type. Until you get to World War III. They have the ability to bring three Fallschirmjäger Stugs. And they have Weasels. You get to bring Weasel uh, 20 millimeters and Weasel Toes. You only get uh, five bases of normal dudes, including your leader, and one base of Milans. You get a choice of adding two hooies, so you can actually bring them in the we've already touched the ground form versus the our hooies are bringing us in. And the hueys are can, they can do that. They can transport the guys from wherever they are at, at the battlefield. They have to load first, take a turn moving there, and then offload to get their butts out of the chopper. You get to bring one option. There's four weasel toes, and they are they're they're, they're good. They're, they're, it's a nice cheap way to get toes on the table, so you have anti tank rating. And you have the uh, 20 millimeter, which is your composite anti-aircraft. It's pretty good. It's very basic, though. Unlike a lot of the stuff you remember from the World War II Fallschirmjäger, these guys have the basic stat ratings everybody else does. Courage 4, Skill 3, Morale 3, Rally 3, Assault 4, Counterattack 4. Their skills are exactly the same as most of the other troops in the book. Until we get to some of the other troops they have here and here, but still. That's, this is the Falschmager. We turn this, we get into the Gebersjäger, which is actually close to what you expect the Falschmager to be like. They've got the same stats. They've got bigger platoons. Congratulations, the Gebersjäger is starting to shine now. They have their own Leopard 1 platoon, which has five in it instead of four max. Yes. Then you have um, the option of bringing all the Gepards in the world, two spots of uh, Lux Recon, and of course the M113 Pounds of Morsers. It's just a really... This, this actually feels more like a Fallschirmjäger company than the Fallschirmjäger do, but if you want to drop out of the sky with helicopters, you can do that with the Fallschirmjäger, and I like it. I've even looked into the point values that are at this. I'm not going to talk about them openly. You can try to read this book if you really want to, or just buy a copy and read the points yourself. But a full Fallschirmjäger company costs 31 points buying everything, all options, including the Hueys. You can bring two of them, so that's 62 points. And if you want to do the, uh, the dream of having just Ride of the Valkyries and have everything start the game in the air, so to speak, or have the capacity to get into the air, all of the helicopters and air support in this book cost 40 points total. That's 102 points to play in everything in my force flies. Team Yankee Force. I like it. I like it a lot. 
I don't think I'll build it because of constrictions I have, but I like the idea you can. So I'm a huge fan of having you know everything flying in the air. That's just great. So going back to it, you have the Gebers Jaeger, and then they have standard Jaegers. Um, Heimatschutz Brigades are your uh, home defense guys, and they come with a standard choice of Leopard 1 or Kanonenjagdpanzer. And the Kanonenjagdpanzer doubles up to what you have in your normal support. So for each company of Jaegers, the uh, Heimatsch, uh, Heimatschutz Brigade, that you bring, you get to bring a Kanonenjagdpanzer. It's not as good as Leopard 1. It has a lower anti-tank. It's not as powerful, but you can still bring it. So if you want to pile up the old school materiel, you can do so by bringing these guys. They have less statistics. They only have like a rally of 4 plus instead of a rally of 3 plus. Their courage, I think, is uh, still at a 4. Their skills at a 4 instead of a 3. Their attack and counter assault, thankfully, stay at a 4. So these guys are, are going to fight as hard as they want to. One Milan missile team per guy. And you can choose to bring them on legs, or you can bring M113s to mount them in. So there's that. Here's the Kanon Jagdpanzer. It is very cheap. It's the cheapest tank in the game I've seen so far, barring someone else bringing T-3485s. So it's got minuscule armor. It's pretty much a stug. It's got a 16 anti-tank. Firepower is decent, though. It counts as a heat weapon, so it's going to trigger any kind of ERA or cho bomb you come across, or the uh, BED armor in the case of the Soviet T, uh, T-72. So it's not a great flank item, actually. You'll be hitting them with their full defenses coming up, whereas the Leopard 1 doesn't have that. The Leopard 1's main gun doesn't count as heat. It's just hitting them as hard as it can. So There's that. And then, of course, these we're familiar with. They added the MLRS from the uh, American book. The British take it too, so if you're NATO, you can have access to that pretty much. And of course, the Rolands, they have a lot of art here. There's scenarios, there's a whole catalog of stuff to buy in the book. But for the most part, the best thing about this book is the fact that you can now bring more with the Germans. If I haven't gone to this front page and looked at it hard enough yet, I mean, this is the best part of this book, is the fact that you can bring Fallschirmjäger, Gebersjäger, um, Heimatschutz Brigade Jaegers, nine different types of mechanized unit, and we still have access to all the allies. We, we've added this useless thing here down here. You might as well bring more Leopard Ones. You can bring boxes of them because they're a primary, uh, they're a primary force. You can bring them. I'm a huge fan, actually, of that one force that I showed you earlier. I am a huge fan of this force, just because the Martyr II, even if they're in small hard to manage formations. You don't get any infantry with them. If you just want to bring armored units and just flood the table with, hey, look, I've got 50 millimeter machine guns, not 50 caliber, 50 millimeter machine guns. You might as well go to town. You will uh, do a lot of bad things to infantry. You do a lot of bad things to the rear ends of tanks. I don't see the heat trait on those. So it's going to go straight after their, uh, their rear armor without any kind of defensive measure. So flank them, hit them in the ass, win a game. Martyr twos are good. Uh, Leopard 2A5 is amazing. I see no reason why not to play West uh, Germans with this version of the book. It's, it's, it's a great improvement over the original Leopard and Panzer Troopen combination. I wish the Fallschirmjäger were better, but they're not. They're just normal Fallschirmjäger. They're just guys that come down the sky from helicopters. If there was a version that had um, higher skill values, that would be cool. If not, eh, it's okay. I can deal with it. They're pretty much Afghansi for the uh, West Germans, really, except for we don't have combined transport gunships. That's okay. Uh, it's, I'd say let's go for it. It's a, uh, it's a really good book. If you want to play West Germans, now's the best time to jump into a World War III and get, get yourself some great tanks. They have the best tank in the game. Get yourself some flying infantry. Get yourself a cheesy little uh, armored fighting vehicle. There's no reason not to pick this up. Thanks for watching the video and hopefully have a terrific rest of your week.